Is it possible to regenerate beta cells if you're living with any form of autoimmune diabetes, including type 1 or type 1.5 diabetes? Well, it's an answer that most people with diabetes are very interested in learning about, especially if you have been living with either one of them for a significant amount of time. Now, both type 1 and 1.5 are chronic conditions that cause the destruction of insulin-producing beta cells in your pancreas, and that then necessitates the use of insulin to control your blood glucose. In this video, you'll learn why we're even talking about regeneration of beta cells in the first place. Number two, we're going to talk about the current state of beta cell regeneration research. And then finally, we're going to talk about what you can do to improve your diabetes health today even if beta cell regeneration is not in your future. Hey, how you doing? My name is Cyrus Kambata. I've been living with type 1 diabetes since 2002. Both my co-founder, Robbie Barbero, and I, who also has been living with type 1 diabetes, have been coaching people to manage and reverse diabetes for decades using easy-to-understand secrets that you can use to master your own diabetes health. The question is, are you ready to master diabetes? If so, let's get right into it. Now, beta cells are pancreatic cells that make up about 1% of the total number of cells in your pancreas. In a healthy person, beta cells release insulin when your blood glucose levels rise. And that then triggers your muscle and fat tissue to absorb glucose from the blood to be used either for ATP production for immediate energy or to be stored for later use as a molecule known as glycogen. By itself, this is a normal physiological response to help maintain an optimal blood glucose value within a normal range. Now, one of the most common conditions involving beta cells is type 1 diabetes or type 1.5 diabetes. In both of these autoimmune conditions, beta cells are attacked by the host's own immune system, which then causes a decrease in the ability to produce and secrete insulin. Now, it's currently a little unclear as to exactly why this happens, though there's a number of research-backed insights that have been gained over the course of time. The most prominent phenomenon that scientists have discovered is called molecular mimicry, which is a very sneaky tactic that's used by various bacteria and viruses in which pathogenic proteins attempt to evade detection by your own immune system simply by disguising themselves as mammalian proteins. Now, in both young children and adults, microscopic holes in the lining of your gut wall allow pathogenic proteins to pass directly from your digestive system into your blood before they've been sufficiently cut into individual units by digestive enzymes. Once these pathogenic proteins are present inside of your blood, your immune system then recognizes them as foreign proteins and mounts an immune response that then targets them for destruction. But because these pathogenic proteins contain specific regions on the entire amino acid sequence that mimic the sequence found on proteins in your body, your immune system can mistakenly target proteins on your own human cells in tissues all throughout your body and label them for destruction which then sets the stage for an autoimmune reaction. Now you can think of autoimmunity as a form of biological friendly fire in which your immune system is hijacked by a pathogenic protein that then tricks your immune system into destroying critical human cells. Now the result of living with any form of autoimmune diabetes is the same. Your immune system attacks beta cells 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, when this happens, your beta cell population decreases significantly and your insulin production then falls. And when your insulin producing cell population has been compromised, eating carbohydrate rich food causes your blood glucose to go very high. But without sufficient insulin production, your blood glucose will go high and it will stay very high for long periods of time. This is called hyperglycemia. And this high blood glucose causes long-term damage to many tissues throughout your body, including your eyes, your liver, your kidneys, your nerves, your thyroid gland, your brain, your muscle tissue, and many others. That's why it is imperative to control your blood glucose using insulin if your beta cell population has been compromised. Now, this presents a lot of challenges to people living with type 1 and 1.5 diabetes. Without question, the biggest challenge to living with type 1 or 1.5 is managing your blood glucose levels on a daily basis. This requires frequent testing, frequent insulin injections, careful monitoring of your activity levels, careful monitoring of the food that you're eating, and careful monitoring of your stress levels. And you got to do it all simultaneously. And I'm going to be the first person to tell you that it's often very difficult to understand which foods can cause your blood glucose to go high and by how much. And in other challenges like daily stressors, having to exercise, and other chronic diseases, before you know it, blood glucose management can become extremely overwhelming. Another complication for people with autoimmune diabetes is having to take costly medications like basal insulin or bolus insulin. Insulin is required when living with type 1 diabetes, but it often comes at a hefty, hefty price tag. In addition, routine doctor's appointments, routine lab testing, and medical devices like insulin pumps and continuous blood glucose monitors can add up very quickly. The good news 
is that we've partnered with RX Valet, which is a company that's dedicated to helping you save 75% or more on insulin and other medications with zero strings attached. If you're interested in learning more about how to save a boatload of cash, then watch this video to learn more. Now, let's talk about what's going on in the world of beta cell regeneration because it's very important. There's been a concerted effort from the medical community to regenerate beta cells since the discovery of their role in type 1 diabetes since the early 1800s. Type 1 diabetes research dates back to the late 19th century when a young surgeon named Paul Langerhans first discovered a highly specialized pancreatic cell type and then their association with insulin production. However, it wasn't until about 100 years later that researchers began to fully understand the mechanisms of this autoimmune response against beta cells in people with type 1 and 1.5. And with that knowledge came exploration of potential ways to regenerate beta cells, to reverse the autoimmune process and regenerate functional beta cells in people living with type 1. Now there's currently several research teams around the world working very hard to regenerate pancreatic beta cells using a variety of different technologies. One study found that by injecting embryonic-like stem cells directly into the pancreas, that can help in the regeneration of adult mouse pancreas after partial pancreatectomy, which is the re partial removal of the mouse pancreas. Another research group pioneered by Dr. Diane Faustman from the Massachusetts General Hospital has published extensively on their novel method to induce insulin production in mice using not the novel BCG vaccine, which is a vaccine that's been commonly administered for over 100 years as a vaccine against tuberculosis and as a treatment for bladder cancer for the past 40 years. Now, using this method, mice are given the BCG virus, which then stimulates the mouse to produce tumor necrosis factor, or TNF, which in turn kills the disease-causing autoimmune cells and then regenerates pancreatic beta cells. While this research is still ongoing, researchers are very optimistic that these rodent studies will actually translate to human models. Now, mice are an important model to, to study, but there's a significant amount of physiologic variation between humans and rodents that make translating these results very challenging. In fact, many proof-of-concept animal studies fail to translate well when tested on humans. For example, a widely cited proof of concept for acquiring beta cells from human embryonic stem cells was published back in 2002 by Douglas Melton and his colleagues at Harvard University. Yet it took another 13 years until the results were successfully replicated in the clinical trial. However, despite this, the research from the Faustman Laboratory is quite promising, and they've demonstrated that the BCG virus has restored blood sugar to near normal levels, even in patients with advanced type 1 diabetes of greater than 20 years of duration, and that's very important. Another research group headed up by Jeffrey Bluestone, PhD, and Stephen Geidelman, MD, at the University of California, San Francisco, have demonstrated an incredibly novel immune therapy in patients living with type 1 diabetes using a isolation and expansion technique first described by Bluestone and his colleagues back in 2009. In this procedure, doctors remove less than two cups of blood, which in type 1 diabetes patients usually contain between two and four million of a very specific type of cell known as a Treg or a T regulatory cell. These Tregs exist in harmony with millions of other cell types. Researchers then separate the Tregs, place them in a growth medium, and amplify them by 1500 fold. They then infuse these Tregs back into the same patient from which they came from, which then bypasses the need for immunosuppressive therapy. Their research has demonstrated that in 14 patients aged between 18 and 43 years old, all with recent onset type 1 diabetes, they successfully received infusions containing these Treg cells, and that restored almost full insulin production and freed patients from the daily grind of injecting insulin multiple times per day. There's another research group that's using a similar approach to regenerating beta cells at similar to the Harvard study mentioned earlier. Specifically, this research team injected human embryonic stem cell derivatives directly into diabetic mice and found that the blood glucose levels were reduced even without the use of immunosuppressive drugs. Now, we mentioned before that that's not always a pure, a surefire sign, but this treatment was also seen to regenerate both pancreatic beta cells and insulin-producing beta cells in human patients. Now, these results are promising, but it's also important to keep in mind that these studies are still only a proof of concept at this point, and that these treatments may or may not be suitable for long-term in humans. From a bird's eye view, though, the research is very promising, and it's certainly going to take some time before these therapies can be administered on a large scale safely. Now, next we're gonna talk about a few of the reasons why it's important to know how to manage type one diabetes today, not necessarily in the future. After all, much of this research is still a ways off from becoming reality, but there's some fundamental challenges to living with type one diabetes that have to be addressed right now. And the good news is that there's always ways to manage your diabetes. 
just like Robbie and I have. If you'd like to stay up to date on all of them, then there's no better place to do it than right here at Mastering Diabetes. If you haven't, take a moment to subscribe and hit the notification bell below, and please give us a thumbs up if you like this video. One of the central problems in type 1 diabetes is that regeneration doesn't work in the long term if your immune system simply attacks beta cells 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, when your immune system identifies a foreign invader, like a virus or a bacteria that can make you sick, it then flags the cells and targets it for destruction. This is a good thing for you because your body gets rid of these invaders that are clearly not supposed to be there. This Adaptive immunity is how vaccines work. And because your adaptive immune system is constantly learning and remembering about pathogens to better defend itself in the future, it's protecting you to make sure that you can maximize your quality of life. So even if you regenerate insulin producing beta cells naturally or using stem cell technology, it may not be enough to overcome this autoimmune process unless you shut the process down completely. The problem of autoimmunity remains, and it's a, it's very challenging. Currently, there's unfortunately little progress being made on how to prevent or reverse autoimmune diabetes. So the best thing to do is to try and prevent type 1 or 1.5 from occurring in the first place. And in the meantime, even if you have type 1 diabetes like myself, there's still plenty of hope. Because even without these insulin-producing beta cells, there are many other ways that you can control your blood glucose using insulin. Now, the first step is eating a low-fat plant-based whole food diet. And we recommend doing this for two main reasons. Number one, the first is that it is the only scientifically proven method to reverse insulin resistance in the short term and in the long term using a plant-based diet containing whole foods that is lower in its total fat content than you would find in the traditional diabetes treatment. The second is that plants and whole foods are high in natural fibers and complex carbohydrates, which can help you control your blood glucose levels, slowing the rate at which glucose is absorbed into your blood. The next part of the method is daily movement. This is very important because it helps reverse the insulin resistance process again, lower your blood glucose, lower your A1C, lower your blood pressure, and it helps you burn more glucose even when you're sitting at a desk. The third and final strategy that we recommend for people living with type 1 and 1.5 diabetes is intermittent fasting. It's a way to oxidize excess stored fat inside of your muscle and liver, and that slowly diminishes insulin resistance and restores their ability to respond to insulin. It also gives your digestive system a nice, much needed break from food, which then makes it easier to control your blood glucose right then and right there. Now, if you wanna get started with the Mastering Diabetes Method today, all you have to do is click on the link below in the description of this video and book a free discovery call. You'll be directed to a page where you can sign up for a time to talk with a real human being on the Mastering Diabetes team to try and figure out exactly how we can help you and help you best. Once again, thanks for taking time to listen to this video. Don't forget to drop us a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and we will see you in the next video.